I want to talk with you this morning about uh, what I'm calling the mirror. And those of you who know me and who followed me for a while know that I've spent most of my life struggling to work with other people, struggling and literally at work. But also in relationships as well, personal relationships, friendships. I saw it modeled in my life. There was a lot of, um, in my parents, there was a lot of, they would have these overt relationships with other people, but when the doors were closed, they would criticize their own friends a lot. And also, I noticed that that criticism would then sometimes bubble over into the friendship. And that's what was modeled for me. And I struggled with that many, many, many years, being very paranoid as to what others are doing or might do because I just couldn't trust other people. That's what I grew up with. And it became my modality and it became my survival. And many years later, I realized something I was journaling and it occurred to me that you can't get along with other people any better than you get along with yourself. Let me say that again. You can't get along with other people any better than you get along with yourself. So the world truly is a mirror the people I have known who have gotten along the best with other people are the people who they themselves, who get along with themselves. Here's what can happen. And it's a, it's a loop, by the way, it's a, it's an infinite loop that we have to break out of. We have negative, let's say I, I'll use I because, it, you know, again, I want to be very honest about how I've been for so many years. I have negative, fearful thoughts about dealing with someone. It can be somebody having to talk to the dry cleaner because they messed up my shirt or whatever. And I walk in with that in that in my head. Okay. So that's a relationship. I'm, I'm that's something I'm saying in my head. And when I get in, I'm already primed for a difficult conversation. The other person sensing that because we sense other people's energy brings that to us as well. So we are causing it. Now, why do we cause it? That's the good question, right? Because again, the whole idea, I'm calling this the mirror. We get along with other people. The way we get along with other people is a reflection of the way we get along with ourselves. So let's say I've got to go talk to the dry cleaner. And uh, which I did. So I'll use a real example. Uh, but this is not how it went at all. Okay. It actually went great. So I'll tell you how it actually went in just a moment. But I got this brand new shirt, took it to the dry cleaner, um, brought it home, and there was an iron burn on the shirt. Now, decades ago, the fear in me, because I had this loop of not working well with people. I, I expected not to do well talking to people. I expected not to get my way. I expected to be disappointed and mistreated. And as a result, Seek and ye shall find. That's what life brings me. Now, what I discovered over the years is that the issue is inside because I'm saying to myself, you're not good at talking to people. Things are not going to work out well for you. You don't deserve for things to work out well for you. You've proven that. To Do you hear the negative self-talk that is going on in my head? I am already having a bad conversation before I've even spoken to someone else. Take that in a second. You're already having a bad conversation, a negative conversation, an attacking conversation in your own head. You're telling yourself you're not capable. You're telling yourself you don't deserve. That's why I keep recommending and 
<coughs> excuse me, I've gotten so hooked on audiobooks lately, uh, celebrity memoirs. I'm listening to uh, Muhammad Ali's right now. Awesome. Anyway, um, I'm getting so hooked on those, but I want to go back and listen to how to win friends and influence people. Because here's the thing. If we have negative self-talk, which most of us have, it was given to us from our parents or perhaps from an abusive relationship or something like that. If we have painful negative self-talk, we take that into interactions with other people and we expect those interactions <clears throat> to go based on the paradigm we have set for ourselves. This is me. This is how things work out. It's gonna go this way. Might as well jump to it. And as a result, it doesn't go well. Over the years, I've started to realize, I've begun to realize that I live in a happier, healthier, kinder world than I ever imagined. It's true. It's very true. And the thing is, the only way for me to get there is to bring it in here. In other words, if I sh walk up to the counter at an airline and need to make a change or something like that, if I go up with the expectation this person's going to be rude, they're going to be dismissive, they're not going to help me, or if I go up, and this is something we commonly do, blaming somebody else, you know, this is not my fault, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when we show up and are vulnerable and expect two things, vulnerability and expectation, vulnerable expecting that the person is uh, uh, being honest about what's going on. And second, vulnerable and allowing the other person to help us. I had a speech uh, client the other day that I, this was about two months ago, but I had a pre-event meeting with them, which I do with every one of my speaking clients. And so the thing was, I completely missed the speech, I, I mean, the, the appointment, the meeting, it was on my calendar It popped up several times during the day and I just glided right past it. And it wasn't just with one person. It was with like six people who were coming together to do a Zoom meeting to help me know what there was going on in their association before I spoke to them. And I thought to myself, OK, I've got to I got to protect myself. That's what I went to. Right. That's what we do. Uh, I never got an alarm. My assistant, all these lies clicked through my head and I went, I'm going to reach out to them and say to them, I missed this. I blew it. I am really sorry. And I think they'll accept me. And if they don't, at least I feel good about me. And that's the thing. And they did, by the way, they laughed. They were like, oh, I did that last Tuesday or something like that. And then, of course, they got to say, oh, well, at least don't be late for the speech. Yeah, and it was it was a bonding thing because I was honest, because I was OK with myself, even having made a big mistake. I was OK with myself. And so I brought that energy into the interaction rather than having to protect myself or trying to cover from myself. You know, when we do that, we also have to be open, like I said, vulnerable to the person not being okay with it. You know what? What if I had said, you know, I, I missed it. I just totally missed it. Sorry. I'm here now. Let's talk. And they had said, you know, this really shows a lack of professionalism on your part. I'm concerned about this. I'm not sure we made the right decision paying you all this money to bring you in to speak. If that person would have said that, I need to also be okay enough inside myself going, you know, we all make mistakes. I made one and I accept myself. And then we could have moved on and I wouldn't have needed to defend myself. Defense always comes from a weak position. It's the cornered dog that barks and attacks. When we look back, when we look around and realize we're not cornered, I can just tell you the truth and let the chips fall where they may. That's a level that the universe has to resonate positively with. Just being in your truth and being vulnerable. Again, vulnerability does not guarantee you're going to get what you want. It keeps you in integrity and the other person can sense that. 
and it makes them much more likely to want to accommodate you. It's a loop. And the reason, like I said earlier this morning when I first started, that it felt so good to talk about this today, because this morning, I don't know why, I woke up and for some reason my record had skipped the groove. I wasn't feeling all that positive about myself. We all do that. And so I started doing the number one thing that I started taking the express, express train to happiness, and that is gratitude. Okay. The, more specifically, though, I wanted to be grateful for myself. And in what ways am I grateful for myself? And I was in the shower. And as I was shaving, I was just repeating, all right, I'm grateful for this about myself. I'm grateful that I can do that. I'm grateful I know how to juggle. I'm grateful I'm a good dog dad. I'm grateful that uh, I took advantage of my education. I'm grateful I continue to read. I'm grateful that I am working more and more and more to be in alignment and integrity with my highest self and to attract those who are in that same space and to help other people. So you see what I mean? I went from feeling a little, I don't know, he, I guess I had hedonically adapted to all the great things in my life and even about myself. And there's that, the idle hands are a devil's playground. The pl workshop, the idle mind is a devil's playground. And so we need to begin to focus it on what's good about ourselves. And when we focus it on what is good about ourselves, what we appreciate, love, accept about ourselves, it empowers us to share that same space with other people. And that's an important thing. I really continue to love being here with my daughter and my son-in-law and Carja the cat and Ronan and Carly the dogs and Aston the other cat. And I know that over time, we all would, if I lived here, we'd get sick of each other. And one of the things that we have been very careful to do in which their house allows is taking space by ourselves, you know, as Khalil Gibran said, let there be space in your togetherness. That's not just true for romantic relationships. That's true for uh, all relationships. And so we have done that and maintained that relationship with ourselves so that we can maintain good relationships with one another. Think about that today. Think about how are you getting along with yourself? The challenge is, because it is a loop, if someone is rude to you or dismissive to you or whatever, we often want to take it personally and say, there must be something wrong with me. I attracted this. Someone cuts in front of us in traffic and we, we take it personally. We violate Don Miguel Ruiz's very first agreement. We take things personally. When I read that book, <laughs> The Four Agreements, this this, this. I was like, okay, I got it. My life should be perfect. Don't take things personally. Um, how? <laughs> and you actually have to begin to work on that in your own head. So remember that the world truly is a mirror of who you are, that you are looking back at yourself. Everywhere you look, you see yourself. And there's no better proof of that than just a little smile. That's why I love the fact that in dialectical behavior therapy, one of the little things that they recommend is to walk around with a half smile on your face. You know why? I find all of a sudden you live in a happier world <laughs> because everybody starts to match that little smile back at you. If you're walking around like this, that's what the world's going to send you. But even just a this. And the other thing I've noticed, too, doing that smile when you're not wearing a mask is that it often causes people to double take and look at you like they look at you like you're more attractive or like you know some sort of secret. The secret is that you know is that your mouth and your brain work together. When you're happy, you smile. When you smile, you're happy. It's a, uh, oh, what's the word? Psychosomatic thing, psyche. Soma thing, not psychosomatic in the normal sense. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. 
No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more.